everybody. We're out here at uh, Volusia County Gun and Hunt Club, uh, literally on the surface of the sun. Um, today we are going to be talking about Roland Specials and what ammo does, doesn't work in them, and their functionality. Uh, hopefully our viewers aren't so you know you'll come away from this video with some information and you'll put it to actual good use instead of just wiping your ass with it like the majority of Garen Thumb videos that viewers do. If you're here to find out what a Roland Special is, you're in the wrong video. Um, those of you who know, know. It's the ultimate meme gun. Um, and we're just gonna be doing some tests on the KKM Compensator. Um, this is only gonna be for the KKM Compensator. I am not gonna do any tests on the Texas Black Rifle or the PMM or whoever the Rinky Dink compensator company you've gone with, I'm going with the KKM, because the KKM has, if you are able to use Google, now in the future we might be able to do a, you know, a quick review on the PMM comp, comp because I do have, an, have access to it, but for right now it's just going to be text, uh, not the text back rifle, the KKM comp. The KKM comp, if you do your research, like I said, just do some fucking Googling, you'll notice that it is reported as the most effective of all the micro carry comps out there. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some uh, shooting with this uh, shitty aluminum case stuff. I uh, have some steel case stuff that won't be in the video, unfortunately. I don't want to talk about it, but um, rest assured that I'll let you know the results at the end of it. And once you get the results, um, I'll also talk about the best way to make, your, your, make sure your rolling special is reliable and shooting flat, quite frankly. So uh, without any ado... I'll get shooting. Now we're going to be using some uh, Blazer aluminum case, 147 grain. Um, it only gets going to about, I think, 850 to 900 feet per second. That's pretty slow for a nine millimeter. Um, from my experience, I've put maybe two or three thousand rounds to this gun uh, through various loads of different speeds and weights, and I found for the most part that any 115 grain with the stock recoil assembly that's going at least at least 1190 feet per second um, sometimes 1150 works okay but 1190 for 115 grain works and 124 grain works too but the most of the 124 grains usually going around 1100 to 1200 feet per second just like the 115 grain so I'll give you a rundown on my thoughts on that afterwards but for now we're gonna be shooting this out of the Roland Special alright I'm gonna be shooting out of a uh Safari Land 6354DO for the Dr. Optic. Uh, keep in mind if you buy this uh, holster for use with an RMR and a Glock, you will have to trim a little bit on the end of it. Um, great holster, can't recommend it enough. All right, we'll get shooting. We'll see how this stuff works in this gun. It works. For me, actually, most Glocks failed to mock lock back for me. I've got pretty large hands. Um, my support hand covers pretty much the entire gun, no matter how I how I hold the gun. So that's not really a malfunction. But you can tell with this stuff that's you know heavier, slower. It does work. Next step, we're going to shoot some 115 grain, and we'll show you how that works too. Gen 4 stock recoil spring assembly. Um, I chose a Gen 4 just for a bit of background because my research showed that it was more reliable with the KKM comp with the dual captured recoil spring. Uh, Gen 5 could be the same. I don't know. I don't have a KKM and a Gen 5. Um, but the KKM and the Gen 4 does seem to be working. Now we're gonna sh I'm going to demonstrate 115 and then 124. All right, first mag's going to be 115. Target loaded in the gun. Now you can see that, all right, before you can see, this gun is zeroed for 115. So my point of impact is gonna be a little different. We're sitting at about 15 yards. That doesn't seem like much, but it is. I still have to change my holds a little bit because I tend to go a little high with 115 when I'm shooting in this gun. Um, now we're gonna do some 124.
All right, so we got the uh, upper disassembled from the frame of the This thing's hot. It's really hot out here, guys. Like I said, surface of the sun, I could probably cook some steak and eggs in this fucking thing. They'd be a really small egg. Really small steak. kyle size steak. Sorry, cameraman. Love you. Uh, all right, so to get the most functionality of Roland Special, I've found through both my experience and research, and not in terms of just functionality, but performance as well, a 13 pound recoil spring is the way to go. This is an ISMS, ISMI, this is an ISMI recoil spring on a NDZ guide rod. And I have found through both shooting matches and my own shooting that this is the best way to get a flat shooting Roland Special. Um, the gun does shoot flat with the Restart recoil spring assembly, but it will shoot even flatter with a 13 pound spring. Um, you'll also notice that, you know, it moves pretty easy and freely. Um, one caveat to keep in mind is that with a 13 pound recoil spring, you can have battery issues, like returned battery issues, not battery issues with either your, your vibrator for your love pillow or your RMR. You battery issues for returning to battery, you know? Like, so, usually with the stock striker spring and a 13 pound recoil spring adapter, you'll have it where the slide fails to close completely with a live round in the chamber. Usually Glocks won't go off, they're pretty safe. You know, it's not a Taurus or a Lorsen, but um, it's not a situation that you want to be in, especially not in a defensive situation or in a match. So, what I did, and what I found to be most reliable, is to use a four and a half pound striker spring for the striker. Um, the reason I chose four and a half is lighter than that, you do get the possibility of light striker strikes, <laughs> firing pin strikes on the primer. Um, this isn't a problem with Federal ammo, or even most Winchester, but it can be an issue with blazer brass and blazer aluminum. And as you saw in that first magazine, I was shooting the blazer aluminum and I had no issues with the four and a half pound firing pin striker. So a striker spring, uh, four and a half pounds, it's the best way to go. Most reliability on your gun, flattest shooting, smoothest feeling. That's gonna be my recommendation. If you're building a Roland Special with a Gen 4 Glock 19 with a KKM barrel and KKM compensator you're going to notice a difference. It's very slight in flip and return on the slide compared to the stock recoil spring. Now I'm going to shoot and you'll see the difference. You might even see a little difference in my shooting, which has been horrid today. I'm a little out of practice and it's hot as fuck. If you were shooting paper, then it would still look great. So everybody in the YouTube comments, fuck you. You'll also notice that the slide was cycling a lot faster, allowing me to pull the trigger faster, because I can shoot a little faster than the slide can move. Just a touch. I'm not bragging, I'm not Jerry Mitchellich, but 13 round, 13 pound recoil spring with 124 grain ammo, that's what's the best performance for me. All right. I'm gonna talk about the ammo choice that I choose. I go for 124 grain. Um, the reason for that is my carry ammo is 124. So if you have a setup like this and you're not too concerned about your carry ammo with a 13 pound recoil spring and the KKM comp, you can shoot most 115 grain that's hot enough to get it to cycle. Um, you'll find it actually shoots even flatter. Um, I, I don't know, I, I don't know the science behind it completely. I feel like there's more gas, activates the comp more. So you get a flatter shooting gun even with 115 grain. So if you're shooting in an open and you're shooting with uh, you know light, 115 grain stuff you're you're not going to be as competitive as these guys that are shooting major guns but you know it'll it'll give you some really awesome performance again i shoot 124 grain because i carry 124 grain so i train what i shoot um, when i shoot matches i'm not too concerned about my point of impact so much so because i can always go back and shoot it again or you know you know two charlie two alpha whatever um anyway um 
So yeah, uh, you, you'll find that, <coughs> that with the follow shops would be even faster with 115 grain. So again, if you're competing, you're training, you're you know trying to show off while LARPing for your friends, 115 grain works great. Um, but I do recommend the 13 bed recoil spring if you're going to go that way. Um, yeah, I mean that's it. That's that's not necessarily it. I probably do have more things to talk about, but. All right, so what you can take away from this, guys, is that these guns are much more reliable than people would say. Um, the, you'll hear a lot of scuttlebutt on the internet, especially how, you know, you put the compensator in your gun. Why? Why do you need, why do you need your gun to shoot? Why do you need the compensator in a 9mm or it doesn't have any recoil? Well, that's stupid. We put compensators in AR-15s all the time. They don't shoot 5.56. 5.56 doesn't exactly recoil a lot. The point is you're trying to get that maximum performance out of the gun as you possibly can especially if you are depending if your life depends on this um if you're carrying it you're trying to want to you're, you want to protect your family um your friends um your uh, signed picture picture of garen thumb no matter what you're trying to protect anything that can increase the performance of your gun is a smart buy um, the purpose of this video isn't to tell you to go buy the KKM compensator. It's fucking and it works in your Gen 4. It's to tell you, if you, it's to show you if you've already bought this, that you can trust it. Um, even with the stock recoil spring assembly. If you're going to be, I'm not going to tell you to go carry Tula in it. Um, that's stupid. You shouldn't even be shooting Tula in a Glock. It, it, this 124 grain NATO is 19 cents a round. If you can't afford that, then you have no business in a setup like this to begin with. If you have to shoot Tula through your rolling special, stop being poor. It's just that simple. Um, so yeah, the takeaways from this are, it's reliable in a Gen 4. I haven't done it in a Gen 3, um, but it's reliable. Um, it works, it's very flat. Um, and that's all I got for you. Oh, everybody. Everybody out here talk about the Boogaloo. Stop buying extra guns and shit. Buy one gun, fuck ton of ammo. Make sure it's a good gun. Buy an infantry field manual. Manual. Man, 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 manuel. Not manual. Manual. Buy a ranger handbook. Yes, nods are cool, but training, practice. I'm not gonna do the Garen Thumb harp on, on training thing because I'm not a professional like he is. But I will tell you, you need you need to learn these tactics. And, yeah. If you like this video, go down to your comment section, type some stupid shit, insult me. I don't care. Subscribe, like, share with your friends, share with your idiot friends who keep buying Tauruses, whatever. Just keep doing you. Do the right shit. I don't know why my shooting sucks, but I gotta come out to the range more, and so should you.